Hi and welcome to the channel. And first of all, apologies for not uploading videos and that through March. It's been an absolute crazy time at the moment. There's a few things going on in sort of real life for us at the moment. And we're having to sort of more or less not pause totally the hobby, but just park it a little bit now and then to deal with those situations before we can come back to the hobby. But what we have done though is we try to sort of keep everyone up to date with what's going on over on our Facebook page. So when we've managed to get some hobby time and hobby work done, we've give you an update of what's going on on there. And that way it sort of keeps the sort of like the flow going and that, but it's just making videos as you all know, if you guys make videos and that, you know, it does take time and then you've got to edit it, put it all together and upload. It does take a little bit of time. So I just thought I'd give you a little bit of an apology. First of all, that's the reason why it's going to be a bit sort of thin for the moment. But again, we will try to keep everybody updated over on our Facebook page, which has a link in the description in this video below. But if you've been following our Facebook page, you would also seen that the hobby work we have done was the month of March. If you remember back at the beginning of the year, we put out a diary of what we were going to be working on. And March was a 40K models. Now, not for playing 40K itself, but for playing Grimdark Future by One Page Rules. We've managed to do a few bits and pieces for that. Jamie was doing some new intercessor jump troops and he converted a chaplain with a jump pack, which you can do in Grimdark. And he's to, to add to that unit. And he's got, those are all done, they're all packed away. I forgot to take some pictures of them. So I will get them out and get some pictures of those and I'll upload them onto our Facebook page. But what we also have been working on is the Deathwing Assault Box. Uh, that was the limited edition box run that Games Workshop do. I'm not a fan of those limited edition box sets. I think they should just be available all the time personally, but that's just me. Um, and, that, and so we've been working on the Deathwing Knights and you'll see a picture up on the screen now. And those are really, really cool. And also the a Deathwing uh, Terminators that go alongside them, they're currently being done, as well as some of the characters and the new Inner Circle Knights. Or Inner Circle unit, I don't know what, I can't remember what they're called now. The ones that would be in the purple robes and that. I think they were reclaimed or something. Yeah, whatever it is, they were those. So we're working on that. So that's when we can get backwards and forwards. April's the month where we're gonna work on some LRDG to go with our um, DAC attack force. So that might be spread out a little bit throughout the rest of the months and that throughout the year because of what's going on in the background. But that's not all what we've been doing. We've also had a lot of Kickstarters arrive. Now I've also again posted on Facebook, we've had our Dead Man's Hand Kickstarter and a huge thanks to Mark and Stuart over at Great Escape Games. I think they run a superb Kickstarter. Uh, it's one of the best along with Ian McDonald's Border Wars, which we've also received recently. Again, Ian, at, at, at Flags of War and also um, Great Escape Games. I think there's been some of the best Kickstarters I think we've ever been involved with. The communication, the, the, the updates and that you're getting, superb, can't fault them. And if you ever get a chance and you're interested in those sort of, the periods and that that they do, and they do another Kickstarter, jump on it. It is well worth doing. But talking to Kickstarters, Jamie's finally received his long awaited, now this has been know, two years, three years? In the, in, in the sort of process, and it's been a bit of hassle in the meantime, the Six Siege game by Mythic Games. Now, the Six Siege game is based on the Rainbow Six Siege on the uh, PlayStation, PlayStation 4, Xbox, and PC. And again, it's it, the, the board game, as you can see some pictures up on screen, the board game really reflects the video game. And the, the, again, the rules writers, for, for the game and that are superb. They've, they've actually managed to capture the flavor of each of the characters that you can play in the video game and to play them on the tabletop and that with all their abilities and what you can do, it is a really good game. Um, we've played a number of games in that when we can over through the evenings, just learning games and keep adding different characters and that just to see how they play. And I have to say, it's very, very, very good. So this Easter weekend, what have we been getting up to? Well. It's been great, and we actually had managed to get a couple of games in. So I suppose all the, the, the through the March and that, and then not being able to do much, this weekend was, was, was a nice refreshing break. We managed to play two games. One was a big Grim Dark Future game. Recently received Commission Army that he's had painted, his Adeptus Mechanicus. Sort of a, there's a, sort of a screen a shot of the air for you on screen. We will be doing a showcase video of this army because there's a couple of nice little conversions that Jamie's done in there, which I think you'll like. And it's again, all painted up once again by Blazing Brush Studios. 
James over there at Blaze and Brush and that is superb and that his quality of work is second to none. It's really, really good. Um, and again, can't wait to sort of give you a showcase of that army like we did with James Dark Elder army. But that was not the only game we played. You might remember through early parts of this sort of January, February, we were working on a Lion Rampant Crusade project. And I said to you, Easter was gonna be a time when we were gonna get it all out on the table to play a game. Well, here it is. I know if you, bear, if you bear with me so far into this video, it's a bit of a ramble that I haven't done for a little while. This is the game, that, the, the table setup that we played. And what I'll do is I'm gonna take the camera off in a minute and I'll do a sort of, I'm gonna screw shaky cam so I've got to charge my gimbal up. But I'll, I'll take a walk around the table showing you the table setup and the force we were using. So here's the table set up and then from the other side from where the tripod was. So Crusaders from the right in front of the village and the Saracens on the left coming through to attack the village. That was the scenario that the Crusaders had to defend the village. So this is a, both were 50 point forces, as you can see. And we've done a showcase video on each of these armies that we've been working on early part of this year. And I'll leave a link to that playlist at the end of this video. So Jamie was commanding the Hospitaller Force, which was from the priest on the bottom right there. Crossbowmen, light spearmen, the foot sergeants, mountain sergeants behind, and the knights. And with the knights, we gave them the drilled upgrade. That removed their, uh, I think it was the wild charge rule. And I commanded the skirmishers, the archers, foot sergeants, and two units of knights. And with the two units of knights, we upgraded them to be have motivation. That gave them their move order on a six, six plus instead of a seven. Um, and I can tell you now, I couldn't buy an order. Most of my orders that I roll were three. <laughs> I just couldn't buy an order. The characters, like with the Saracens on the oval basis, they were just tokens. We just had them out to decoration to, to, to sort of like, sort of make the table look a bit nice and have extra flags and that on the, on the table. We've done those up when we made the armies so we can play other sets of rules. So like Soldiers of God or Hell Caesar. So that's really, really cool. So I'll just move over to the Saracen forces. As I said, they were coming in over on the left. And we'll have a look at those. Their upgrades mainly were their light cavalry, which is say these, there was three units there and on the flank over there. They were upgraded to veteran, which were really good. So that meant that they, if I remember rightly, they could, and when they skirmished, they did it on their normal sort of five plus instead of on a plus one, so instead of a six, so I have six plus to shoot when they're shooting. So it's really cool. They also had their holy men. He, holy man, he was attached to a warrior unit. Very effective. We used the rules for the holy men from the Crusader Saints book, so we thought that reflected the period a little bit better of those characters. And as you can see, Mel had uh, two units of spearmen there, and then one over the front there. So I said three units of like cavalry. Two units of sort of heavy cavalry, one there and one there. And she had a unit of archers and that, so that, and oh, a unit of skirmishers. And from our last little trial game that Mel and I had, I did my very best to try and stay away from them, them skirmishers because knights going into skirmishers in, in, in rough terrain, I learned my lesson with that. I can tell you that now. And those that play Lion Rampant will know what I'm talking about. Uh, but there we are, that's the two forces all set up and we'll take a look at some of the action in the game. 